Okay, we're going to talk all about flams. So flams is an absolute staple for marching drummers. We need to make sure that you fully understand what a flam is, how you can play it, how you should play it, and all of the variations around that so that you know exactly what you're doing correct or even maybe even incorrect. So the flam looks and sounds like this or this. And so you can hear there's two notes being played there. If you think of the little tune, ta-da, ta-da, well, the da is the main note. We're just putting another note right before it, which is almost, think of someone opening the door for somebody. It's almost like opening the door for the da. So if we think about the flam in that same way, we've got our main guy, our right hand here. He's the rock star here coming through the door. So he's going to be up here. And then opening the door at the bottom, right before him, is my left hand. So it's going to be a right-handed flam, because this is the main one here. And the, this guy down here is called a grace note. Well, the grace note happens just before that main note. The big thing that we're going to have to talk about here then is the heights of these two sticks. So the grace notes tend to be around about three inches. So I'm not lifting very high at all. Right, we could make them higher or lower, but if we for the moment just assume that three inches is going to be the height that we all want. This guy on my right hand could be any height. I could say, right, we're going to do a six inch flam. We're going to do a nine inch, 12. But for the, today, what I'm going to teach you is full flam. So we're going for a full turn from up here. Now, I like to think of it as both of these guys lift up from set position. So he lifts about three, he lifts all the way up here. And it's kind of like they're having a race to the head. But obviously this guy here is going to arrive first because he's closer. So then we get. So what I'm teaching that, reason I'm showing that is they need to leave at the same time. It doesn't want to be left, then right. They want to move at the same moment to get that sound. Now, how long is there between the first guy arriving and the second guy? Well, this is open to kind of discussion. So we get wide flams where they take a long time before they hit each other, like this. And we get tight flams where they're really close. I would say that most drum lines have a happy medium between the two. But this is something that you would differentiate when you've got lots of guys playing together. So if you see that some of the guys are wide, you're gonna tell them, look, you have to close your flams up. And if you see some of the guys are really tight, you're gonna ask them to open them flams. So the terminology is quite important here. Now we have something that some people do by accident called flat flams. Well, this grace note here needs to arrive before the main note. Well, if they accidentally arrive together like this, we only get one noise. We're not getting ta-da anymore, we're just getting da. Well, that was a bit like that. So that would be called a flat flam. Now that isn't something we would see people doing purposely. That tends to be an error. So make sure that your left hand is arriving first before that right hand comes through the door. And that's a right-handed flam. If we lift our left hand up in the air now and we play our right hand first, this is opening the door for the left hand now, that would be a left-handed flam. So a three inch right followed by a loud left. So now we want to learn to alternate. We do a right-handed one, so the left's arriving first, then the right, and then the opposite. So that you guys understand um, when you're making mistakes on this, we have something called mouths. Well, mouth is simply the word flam. It's about backwards. Well, mouths is a really advanced rhythm that you're only really going to do once you've mastered lots of other things. But if I teach you it now, at least you'll understand the difference between the flam and the mouth. And if you're accidentally doing mouths, then you know to stop. The mouth is where, instead of this guy here arriving second, in other words, instead of the rock star arriving after the door's been opened, the rock star's getting in there and then the door's been opened, all right? So in other words, this one's hitting first. So that would be a mouth. So we're getting right hand loud and then a quiet one afterwards. So the flam, the grace note, is the wrong side of the, the main note. So that's a mouth and the left-handed version would be this guy arriving first and then the other guy. So we've got to be really careful we don't do those accidentally. We want to make sure that our right hand is arriving second and that's a right-handed flam and our left hand is arriving second and that's a left-handed flam. So flam, like I said, is in absolutely all different styles and genres of marching and drumming. So it's something you need to make sure you get down. Very often flams are actually put on top of other patterns as embellishments we might call it so if i quickly show you that you, you'll understand that then why this is such an important rudiment to know if we take four notes and we go one two three four then i'm doing a loud first note 
followed by three quiet notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What you might do is exchange that first note for a flam. So we now get flam, two, three, four. Flam, two, three, four. So if I go real slow, we're going on to the right hand. So a three inch tap onto the right hand, then a three inch tap, a three inch tap, a three inch tap, and that's the whole pattern. Now a left-handed flam would work there, but it would be an odd pattern then, because I do a left-handed flam, and I have to go left, right, left, if we stick with that same pattern, all right? So left, right, left, left, right, left. A better idea would be to reverse the whole thing and then make it go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, which will give me left-handed flam, right, left, right, right, left, right. So when we get a line of people playing, and we're trying to make everybody sound the same, it's really important that when we're playing a passage of music that we explain to them, um, if one of the guys is playing that thing I've just showed you there, wide like this, and one of the other guys is playing it really tight like this, then it's going to sound messy. So what we would do there is we'd, between us, between ourselves, figure out exactly how tight we're going to play them. And that's how we clean that up. On these high tension snare drums, you can hear every little every little note because they're so staccato in and out the sound's gone so flams are going to cut through every time and we need to make sure that that is spot on go away practice them you'll soon get the flams they're everywhere so you get to practice them lots see you next time